Today's reading is from the first chapter of Mark, starting with the fourth verse. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locust and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Well, let me ask you, did you make any New Year's resolutions? Hmm? How are you doing with them? Well, two women were having lunch together, and one asked the other, how are you doing with your New Year's resolutions? And the second one answered, well, this is the end of February, and I have kept them all. And her friend was amazed and said, really? The woman came back and said, yes, I have kept them in a manila folder in my desk. (laughs) Well, many of us make New Year's resolutions with the hope of making changes in our lives. Yet for many of us, I hope, I dare say, just about everybody here this morning, the greatest change that can happen in your life has already happened. Let me explain. This past week, I picked up a a little book entitled One Word. What caught my eye was its very bold claim printed on the dust cover. It said, there's a word meant for you. When you find it and share it, your life will become more exciting and more purposeful than ever. Well, the authors were three men. Dan Britton and Jimmy Page, two of them are both uh, uh, very uh, active in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Actually, they hold executive positions. The other, John Gordon, is is a well-known motivational speaker and writer. All three of these gentlemen write and speak from a Christian perspective. So I immediately assumed that they were talking about Jesus Christ, the Word of God, the living Word. But I was wrong. No, to make a a, a short book even shorter, their message was that having well-defined goals, like New Year's resolutions, having thought-out strategies and detailed plans, they all have their usefulness. All of them can be very helpful in making changes in our lives. But what they suggest is that each one of us find one word that will keep us focused and motivated in every area of our lives. Well, that caught my attention, so I started reading. Well, the concept, I'm trying to simplify it, the concept is that each one of us has a personal word that we we can find for ourselves that's, that's going to help us stay focused, keep us motivated. For instance, if you're the type of person that procrastinates in just about everything you do, that word might be persistence. And we, we keep that word on, on, right in the forefront of our mind, no matter what we're doing at work, at play, here in church, being focused. Well, maybe you're the type of person that's a workaholic. You spend long hours at work, or you fill your briefcase up, Uh, with work to take home at night, and what happens? The family is is neglected. So perhaps you select that word family, and you keep that in mind. 
throughout the day, no matter what you're doing. It's family. One word. Well, they suggested that we go through this process once a year. And every year we find a new one word. Well, let me tell you something. I read that book, a short book, only took me about an hour. But in the first 15 minutes, I came up with my one word. And that one word is baptized. Now, why would I do that? Well, because I knew I was preaching on baptism. <laughs> well, that's just the surface reason. No, I mean it. That's mean. I mean it. This is Baptismal Remembrance Weekend here at Trinity, as Pastor Paul explained. It's the weekend that we remember and celebrate the baptism of Jesus Christ and what that means. We also remember the baptism of the children who were uh, brought into fellowship here and in the Christian church last year. And we also remember our, our baptism. Well, let's look at Jesus' baptism. The Gospel of Mark begins by telling us that John the Baptist was preparing the way for the coming of the Messiah, the Savior, the Christ, that people have been praying for and waiting for down through the ages, this, this one who would deliver them. And John, John the Baptist was calling people to come out and to receive a baptism of repentance of sin. To come to him, confess their sins, repent. That means turn away from those sins and receive the forgiveness that God offers. And as a sign of their being forgiven, to be baptized with the water, symbolizing the washing away of their sin. Well, many people came out to be baptized. Some of them even wondered whether or not John, John the Baptist, was the Messiah himself. But no, that's not what his message was. John's message was, after me comes the one more powerful than I. The straps of whose sandals I am not even worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Well, one day Jesus approaches John to be baptized. Why? <laughs> Why would Jesus want a baptism for the forgiveness of sin? Scripture tells us over and over again, he never committed a sin. Why would, he, why would he want to be baptized? Well, if we run over to Matthew's gospel, we, we get a, a little explanation. It says that when Jesus came to be baptized, John at first tried to deter him, turn him away, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you come to me. And Jesus replied, let it be so now. It's proper for us. To do this to fulfill all righteousness. So then John consented. You see, Jesus didn't need to be baptized. He wanted to be baptized. He wanted to fulfill every act of righteousness. Because he was perfectly obedient to God, God's will. He was perfectly sinless. And he wanted to remain that way. And he wanted to set an example for us. That if he would be baptized, certainly each and every one of us should be baptized. You know, only by being that sinless man could Jesus go to the cross and, and die in our place. Only by being that sinless man could he be the sacrifice for all humankind. You, me, everyone else. Well, as Jesus was coming up out of the water after his baptism, he saw the Heaven's torn open. And the Holy Spirit descended on him on the form of a dove. Now the Holy Spirit came upon him, filled him. The Holy Spirit came to guide him, to strengthen him, encourage him, empower him. Because as soon as his baptism was over, Jesus is, is led out into the wilderness where he is going to be tempted by the devil, every way imaginable. And yet he will not. He will not sin. Well, at the same time, as Jesus was coming out of the water, there's, there's a voice from heaven. It's the voice of God. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. My friends, this is why his baptism is so important. 
It establishes Jesus' identity very clearly. Jesus is true man. Jesus has the Holy Spirit of God within him, and Jesus is the Son of God. Right there, this, this story is a clear example of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, when Jesus left this earth after his resurrection from the dead, or before, he gave his disciples what we call the Great Commission. Now, it's recorded in all four of the Gospels, even in the book of Acts. Now, in Mark, it reads this way. Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. Now, that is scary to some people. Some people will say, well, you mean to tell me that if you've never been baptized, you're automatically going to hell? And I said, but that's not what it says. It said, if you do not believe, you will be condemned. God doesn't, that doesn't condemn a, an infant child that's born without baptism. It doesn't condemn that aborigine down in the Amazon River or that person over in the Middle East that's never heard the gospel. But my friends, those of us who have heard the gospel and have been called to repentance and baptism, if we don't accept baptism, then we really have to question ourselves, our faith. Well, this weekend, again, we celebrate those children who were, who were brought forward during the past year to be baptized. Those parents, as you know, made, they made certain commitments that they would raise the child in the Christian faith, that they would teach him the Lord's Prayer and the Ten Commandments. They would place in their hands the Scripture. They'd bring him to church and Sunday school. And ultimately, we hope that those same children will go through the confirmation program where they'll learn for themselves what it means to be a Christian, a believer, a follower of Jesus Christ, and then to make a public affirmation. Well, we also have some adults that were baptized last year. Now, they were baptized after going through the new member class, and they got the basics of the faith in order to be prepared for baptism. But what I'm going to say is this. As I look out there, I see a number of, of folks, including myself. It, it's been a while since we went through confirmation. And it's also some folks here that went through the Life with God course. That was a while ago. And some we're baptized after going through the new member class. So what I want to do this morning is I want to briefly describe what being baptized means to each person who trusts in Jesus Christ. Pastor Paul mentioned the three gifts of baptism. I'm going to talk about the six blessings. First, that first blessing is we are forgiven. Jesus said, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Our being baptized frees us from the original sin we were born in, but it also frees us from the sin that we commit. Now, that doesn't mean we're automatically perfect. No, we're, we're still going to stumble and fall, but hopefully we won't stumble as often and not as bad. But even when we do, if we, can't, if we confess those sins and, and turn away from them, we're reassured of our forgiveness. And when, when that guilt and shame of past sins comes knocking at the back of our brains and, and we hear a voice saying, oh, you're nobody. You made a lot of mistakes in your life. What makes you think that you're good enough to be called a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ? That's when we can shout out at the top of voice, our voices, I am baptized and be free from our past. The second, second blessing is we're going to spend eternity in heaven with Jesus. Friday morning, I performed the funeral service right here. The very opening of that service, here, here's some of the words that are spoken. All of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. 
For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. My friends, no matter how you were baptized, if you were baptized by the sprinkling of water or by having water poured over your head while the the words are spoken, whether you were dipped, dunked into a a baptismal font or, or, or a pool, each method is effective. What counts is the word and, and faith. But I want to tell you something. Being immersed in water is such a beautiful, beautiful picture of what I just read. You see, when a person is immersed into the water, it's as if they're going into death. Just as Jesus went into the tomb and remain there for three days. And when they're lifted up, just as Jesus was resurrected from the dead, it symbolizes, it emphasizes to us that we have been raised from the dead through the death of Jesus Christ. We will, just as he has a resurrection, we will have a resurrection like his. Because he lives, we too will live forever. Again, when we talk about death, it gets a little scary, doesn't it? Especially the older we get. Get a little worried about it. But you know what? We don't have to fear death. Uh uh. When that death comes knocking at our door, we look at it and we give it the same replies. We say, I am baptized. I don't have to be afraid. Well, there's the third blessing we're born again. Now, being born again does not mean jumping up and down and shouting. That may be part of it. That's okay. That's an after effect. That's not, that's not what being born again is. Now, each of us has had a physical birth. But Jesus says that each one of us need to be born again, born from above, born anew by water and the Spirit. And when we're baptized, we become new persons brand new persons. We're new creations. That's the biggest change that could ever happen to us. And you know, that change begins right here in this life. And it will extend for all eternity. Here we're growing and learning there. There we will know as we are fully known. Fourth blessing. We are children of God. In Galatians, we read, So in Christ Jesus, you who are all children of God through faith, for all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, nor slave nor free, nor is there male and female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. Jesus' baptism firmly established his identity. Your baptism, my baptism, firmly establishes our baptism. We are all children of God. Now, I don't know. Sometimes we we just use those kind of words without really really comprehending or trying to comprehend what what that means. That means you and I are children of the God of the universe, the creator of the world, the sustainer of the world. We, we're his child. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. We're a family of faith right here, Trinity Congregation, but we're part of the church Catholic, that total family of the Christian faith. And we have brothers and sisters to love and to to support. And likewise, when we need love and support, therefore, they are there for us. For we are baptized. I said we had six. Here's five. The fifth one is we have the Holy Spirit within us. Just to tell you, I'm not making this up. Acts, the second chapter. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a gift. 
There's one baptism. Whether you were baptized as a child or as an adult, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given to us through baptism to, to lead us, to comfort us, to encourage us, and to empower us. I am convinced the older I get, the more I study the Scripture, the more experience I have, that God is not going to call you or me to do anything that he does not empower us to do. And he will not allow anything to happen to us that he will not enable us, empower us to endure. It may not be easy. Mm -mm. It may not be humanly possible. <laughs> but with him, all things are possible. The sixth. The sixth blessing of baptism is we have a great purpose. Actually, it's that same great commission. I'm going to read the commission, though, as it appears in Matthew 4. So that's the one that's most familiar. Jesus said, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always. To the very end of the age. Jesus Christ has given you and me, each of us, a task. A task to perform. That is to share our faith with those who don't know him, those who've drifted away. Now listen. All of us can't be missionaries. We can't all go to, to China, Africa. We can't go to the Middle East. Thank God there are people that do go and we need to pray for them. It's a dangerous, it's a dangerous assignment. But we can be missionaries right where we are. In our community, in our neighborhood, where we work, where we go to school. In our own homes and with our own family. Because each one of us has our own story of what Christ has done for us and means to us to share, to help bring other people to come to know Jesus Christ. Each of us has gifts and abilities from God. We have time that has been given us that we can use to help bring others to come to know Christ as Lord and Savior. And as we do, we have that promise from Jesus Christ himself that he'll be with us every step of the way now until the end of time. Well, I don't know if it's a New Year's resolution, if it'll count as one or not, but I found my one word is to be focused on and motivated by that one word, baptized. Maybe you'll use it too. Amen. Please stand for a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, it's such a privilege, joy, and eternal blessing for each one of us to be able to say, I'm baptized. To know that we are forgiven. To know that we're going to spend eternity in heaven. But also to realize that until then, we have a new life. As children of your heavenly Father. And we have the Holy Spirit to guide and empower us in this life. Until you come to take us home where we go to be with you. Amen.